guys, hope everyone's doing super well and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're gonna be going over one of the newest features that we get, we get with Swift 5 and Xcode 10.2. So if you guys haven't updated to Swift 5 and Xcode 10.2, you should go ahead and do that before you start this video. So um, we have a new result type in Swift 5 and it's gonna help us with our completion back blocks for API callbacks. So let's read this really quick. The result type forces the programmer to explicitly handle the failure and success cases before they gain access to the actual value. So we're gonna be uh, doing that with this Pokedex app that I have here, or some of the API code that we use in that Pokedex app, not the actual app itself. But before we go ahead and get started with the video tutorial, uh, I wanna go ahead and plug my courses really quick. You guys should check those out. So let's go and see what they look like before we get started. Really quick before we get started, guys, I have a couple courses on Udemy. This one is how to clone Instagram with Swift 4, Firebase, and push notifications. It has updated source code for the latest frameworks and stuff, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but it's super cool. You learn how to build Instagram from scratch, the front end, all the back end. There's push notifications in there as well, so that's super important to know how to do as a developer. Uh, you build a fully functioning social network, in-app messaging, in-app notifications, as well as push notifications, search feed, um, and all this really cool stuff. So make sure you guys check that out. I also have a course on how to master MapKit. So if you guys wanna get better with MapKit, check that one out as well. The links to all those courses are in the description to this video. So now let's go ahead and get started with the code. All right guys, let's go ahead and get started. So you're gonna to wanna to download this Xcode project that I have up here. The link to that's gonna be in the description under the resources section. Now basically what this is, is it's the extracted API code that we use to fetch the data in this completed application that I have here. We're not going to be working with this completed application just because it's not necessary to illustrate the concept of this video. Um, it, it would sort of complicate things. So go ahead and download this and uh, I'm going to go over uh, exactly what's going on in this like little mock project here that we use to fetch our data. So. We're gonna hop up to our Pokemon class really quick, and this is the, our data model, right? So this is where we create our structures, and it conforms to the decodable protocol, which is um, how we were fetching this data originally using uh, the decodable feature that was introduced in Swift 4. That made parsing JSON a lot easier than it was in previous iterations of Swift. If you guys don't know how the decodable protocol works, I have a video tutorial for that as well. The link is in the description. So if you don't know how that works, check that out and then come back to this video. Um, basically, the decodable protocol just made parsing JSON a lot simpler, right? Uh, it was kind of a lot of work uh, before the decodable protocol came out. Swift 4 made it a lot easier and now it's even easier and more robust in Swift 5, which is what we're gonna be learning in this video. So now uh, that we understand our data model, let's hop back to our API client. So here's our base URL, which is what you see here. That's where all the JSON data is located. Here's the function we use to fetch our data, which I'm gonna go over in more detail in a second. Here's our view controller, which would be representative of this main screen here, the main view controller with our collection view. This would be our data source. And then this is our uh, API section where we fetch the data using that function we wrote in the API client. So let's hop back there and go over this in a little bit more detail so we understand uh, what's going on, how this worked in Swift 4, and why it's different in Swift 5. So we have this function called fetch data, and it uses a completion block. Now, really quickly, completion blocks just make sure that one task is completed before another task, before we do anything else. So when you're, you, when you're performing an API call, that obviously takes time. It takes time to reach out to the server, and takes time for the server to respond and give your application back the, the data that you requested, or the error, if there's any kind of error that happens. That takes time. So you wanna make sure that you use a completion block to make sure that you get the data back before you try to do anything with that data. So say we're fetching Pokemon, we wanna make sure that API call has completed before we try to do anything with those Pokemon that we fetch back, or before we try to construct them with our custom uh, data model there. So. Uh, we use this completion block and it can have either an array of Pokemon or an error. So here's where we start our URL session and this is where we handle our error. And you notice that we call that completion and if we have an error, we're obviously not getting any Pokemon back and we complete it with an error. And that's why this is optional because if there is an error, 
um, then the Pokemon guy is gonna be nil. And here we have to parse this data. Don't really worry about that. It's just because we have this null up here and we have to remove that in order for the decodable protocol to work. So I wrote this little function to uh, parse that data where it just removes that string and then converts it back to a data object. And here is where we decode all the data using that decodable protocol. Excuse me. So we're saying, we're, uh, saying let this Pokemon equal to uh, this try statement where it uses the JSON decoder, it gives us back an array of Pokemon, and then we call our completion block and complete it with that uh, array of Pokemon. And then here, if we have a decode error, we do the same completion error guy. So then if we go back to our view controller, almost done with this explanation, guys, before we get started with the actual new Swift 5 concept. Here where we call that function, it looks like this. So we say API client.shared.fetch data. And then we, know, we notice that we get this completion block here, which is exactly what we have, um, have it looking like in our, the declaration of our function. So when we hit enter on that, now we can say Pokemon and error, and that's what we get here. Then we write this code here, we handle the error, and if we don't get any error, then uh, we just say self.pokemon equals Pokemon. We set our data source. And then, you know, if we had a collection view, we would call something like collection view.reload data, like that, to uh, make sure it reloads our collection view once we set our data source. So there's a couple problems with that that they uh, sort of solved with this new feature in Swift 5. So you're not required to handle the error. And handling error is very useful when you're making API calls because not only does it help you as a developer understand what's going wrong, you, sometimes you need to present error messages to the user to tell them what went wrong. Like they might not have an internet connection or they might have not, not have any service. So you need to present them with an error message telling them what's going on. Or there could be a problem with your servers. You need to present them with an error message telling them that. You guys see that all the time in apps that you use that involve bringing in data from the internet. So, uh, but like I said, in, this is not required. Whereas in Swift 5, now it is required for the developer to handle the error, which makes the code more robust, right? So. Here we handle the error, but it has to be optional. And then in turn, be, uh, we have to make this, our success case optional as well, because we're not always gonna get that back. Um, we're gonna see in Swift 5 that we don't have to do this. We can, it, it handles, it, it introduces the framework for us to be able to handle the error with the new result type that we're gonna be using. And we don't have to make this stuff optional. And, and it kind of removes all this ambiguity in here. Like we don't have to handle the error this way and kind of do it ourselves. It will kind of handle that for us. So now let's go ahead and get started with actually implementing this new Swift 5 functionality um, to see how this is, to see how it's better than it, it was previously in Swift 4. All right guys, so let's hop into our API client file and we're gonna create a new function. So we're gonna just, we can just call this fetch data as well. And the only difference is gonna be in how we write our completion block and how we call or execute that completion inside of our function. So uh, go ahead and say completion, and then you're gonna type out at escaping, and then do an open and close parentheses, and then outside of those, do an arrow, and then an open and close parentheses. This gives you a void completion block, because we don't want our completion block returning anything. So now go here and say result, and then do an open and closed caret bracket, and then we're gonna say Pokemon error. And then uh, go ahead and do your open and closed bracket, build your project, and you're gonna see that the build succeeds. So right now the only differences, or differences are, is that we have a result type and we don't have to make these optional anymore. You don't have to up here, but um, in order to, to execute this completion block the right way, uh, you don't wanna return like an empty array. So you're gonna to wanna to return nil if there's an error. So it makes more sense to have these as optionals. We don't have to do that here because if we remember from the introduction, our this new result type is going to force us to handle the error. So 
guys, we can actually just go ahead and copy and paste most of this function. Um, the, really, the only real difference is going to be how uh, we execute our completion. So go ahead and paste that in there. We create our URL, start our data session. Now, uh, you guys are gonna notice that we get some errors and it's in our completion, right? So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and delete that and have completion open up parentheses and we're gonna say dot failure. So you notice that we get this uh, failure type, uh, a failure storing a failure value um, as part of this uh, result type completion that we have up here. So say failure, and then it's gonna ask us to pass in a failure type, which is going to be this particular error here. And then uh, we have our success case down here. So there's, uh, as part of this new result type, it's an enumeration with two cases, failure and success. And those, uh, those, each one of those cases taken an associated value with a failure type and a success type. So it makes our API calls a lot more robust and it makes handling failures and successes a lot less ambiguous and a lot easier for us to do as developers. So now we're gonna go down here and do the same thing just with our success case, open your parentheses, say dot success, and we need to pass in our success type, which is going to be this Pokemon. We can go ahead and delete this print statement here. So we still need to decode our data using that decodable protocol. Um, that's how we parse our, and read our JSON and set our uh, custom objects, which is our Pokemon. And we're just gonna call our completion block differently. So now here, we're gonna do the same thing, dot failure, and we're gonna pass in this error. So these are different error types, right? This is like an API callback error, and this is a JSON decoder error. So we can pass in, they're both subclass, they're both er of type error. So um, that's why we're able to pass both of those in here. Um, now, if we build that, that's gonna be good to go. Now let's go ahead and see how uh, it's gonna be a lot simpler to work with when we call this function in our view controller file and how it's gonna be a lot cleaner uh, and a lot more efficient code. So let's go ahead and check that out. All right guys, so hop into your view controller file and we're gonna go to our API section here and we're gonna comment this code out inside of our fetch Pokemon function. This is how we originally fetched our data. Now we're gonna fetch it with a new method and see how it's different and how it's better. So we'll say API client.share.fetch data. And you're gonna see two methods or options come up in the autocomplete. This is the original method. This is the method we want to now use, uh, the method with our result type. So when we hit enter on this guy, we got asked to pass in two parameters, the Pokemon array and the error type. Now when we hit enter, we're just gonna be asked to pass in the result type. So the result type is cool because it can take in uh, generic data types and we have access to those through this result that we get back in our completion. So now we're gonna say switch result. And if you guys remember, I talked about the result being an enumeration, right? The, or the result type being an enumeration. So it's gonna say switch must be exhaustive and we're gonna now handle our success and failure cases case success and now we need to pass in the parameters that we need um, for our success and our failure so let's go in here and say let pokemon this is our associated value with our success case and then we can say self.pokemon equals pokemon and let's just go ahead and execute a print statement debug uh, pokemon name is Pokemon zero, the first Pokemon we get back and then just say dot name. And then failure, we're gonna hear it, you're gonna say let error. And then we're gonna say print debug failed with error. Error. So this is all we have to do um, in order to uh, now handle our success and failure cases from our API call. Here, it's a little bit more ambiguous. We have to you know, check and see if the error exists, and then we have to check and make sure that our Pokemon exists. And uh, all of the code inside of this completion block isn't super clean, and it's kind of ambiguous. It, it will vary on how it's handled between developers. A lot of developers won't even handle the error. So this just makes everything a lot cleaner. 
right? So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get back now. And then I'm gonna uh, do a couple things to show you guys how the error uh, gets handled. So we notice that, guys, we get back our uh, print statement because we hit our success case. And uh, we pass in this associated value of our Pokemon array, and then we're able to print the, post, the first Pokemon's name, right? So what I'm gonna do now to show you guys how the error works, I'm gonna show you the two different error types, and then we're gonna be done with this video. Uh, so really quickly, uh, I'm not gonna parse this data. So we're gonna see that this, uh, let's go ahead, we can go ahead and delete these. Yeah, so delete that and delete that. We don't need those print statements, um, but I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna not parse this data, and then you can just hit a bang here. It's gonna just use the original data we get back from our API that's not parsed, and it's gonna give us a decoding error. So let's run this and see what we get back. Okay, failed with error, value not found, and it gives us this super long uh, decode error, right? So that's because it hit this case and it executed, we pass in this error type when we call the completion so that when we go back in our view controller, when we give it this associated value, that's the error type that it's looking at. So when we print that error, it's giving us back the decode error because that's the failure case that it hit. So now we're gonna see it hit the second failure case. I'm just gonna turn my Wi-Fi off so it's gonna hit this error block and it's gonna complete with that failure case. So go ahead and do that to revert. And now I'm gonna go up here and just turn my Wi-Fi off and now I'm gonna run it. And this is obviously not gonna work because um, I need an internet connection. And you see here it says the internet connection appears to be offline. So uh, there, and now I can turn it back on, run my code again, and I'm gonna get back my success message for printing out the first Pokemon's name. And that's what we get back there. So um, the code here is pretty similar to what we did up here, uh, but it's just different in how we call the completion blocks again. And then what's really nice is how we handle that data fetch when we call the function or how we handle what goes on inside of the completion block. This is a lot cleaner. Uh, if we take these print statements away because we don't need them, or actually we need, it's good to have this one uh, because this is where you could present an error message to the user, but it's a lot cleaner than this. And again, a lot more robust. I'm not gonna keep repeating myself with that guy, sorry. But uh, I hope you guys like this video. Um, I hope that you understand this concept. Uh, check out my courses and my other videos that re are related to this one if there was something you didn't understand or want to understand. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe to the channel. Uh, you guys should be using this uh, result type now in how you handle your completion blocks for your API methods, and uh, it's going to give you some cleaner code. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Peace.